And away we go. It is the nightcap brought to you by Hail Mary Sports Bar right here on BearcatJournal.com. Hail Mary is located in Chevy and on Harrison Avenue. They're in the Dora District, so you can walk from bar to bar with your drinks, or you can just hang out at Hail Mary's. They have 27 TVs, a nine-screen video wall. There's not a bad seat in the house. They subscribe to every sports package that DirecTV offers. They can stream all the games, and they will have all of the Cincinnati sports on the video wall. They have a brand-new walk-in cooler, brand-new draft lines, and not only do they pour the coldest beer around, but they do so in 32.8 degree frosted glasses go see our friends at hail mary's today all right aaron busy little thursday as we get ready for uh three keys and texas tech saturday night remember uh if you can't make it to hail mary's we will also be at the holy grail for the bearcat journal watch party so one or the other pick one of the two and go watch the game uh, at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Should be a good one. I am uh, I'm anticipating a lot of fun. We also got the, uh, the full basketball schedule today, which uh, we will get to uh, here shortly in this show. And uh, let's, uh, let's get to it, Aaron. Three keys. Take it away. All right. Well... We will start off with my three keys. My first key is control the flow. What I mean by that is don't want – obviously, if you're going to score fast, I, I, I'm not going to be ever be upset that, oh, you scored too fast. That, that's stupid. But I do hope that they are able to, on drives that stall, at least run the clock and upset the tempo of an up-tempo team. Eighty To average 80 offensive plays per game is a scary thing. That's what Texas Tech does. And yeah. I would love to see them closer more to that, like, 60 range uh, as opposed to 80. Um, but I'm hoping that the defense can kind of dictate what the offense is able to do in that regard. Um, and the offense is able to kind of control the tempo of the game. So, uh, number two, win the turnover battle. This is the team, Texas Tech, that has turned the ball over. They, they are not unfamiliar with that. Um, Brennan Sorsby is a little unfamiliar with turning the ball over. Now, that said, at some point, he's going to do it. I hope yeah. it's not this game. Um, I, I'd like for him to continue to take care of the ball. I'd like for the running backs to continue to take care of the ball. Um, but I, I think that a, a big key to this game is going to be whoever has the most turnovers is going to go back to number one, control the flow of the game. This is also a Texas Tech defense that is not good, but they have – created turnovers so that has been kind of their saving grace defensively they don't get a lot of stops but they have managed to to take it away some so that's a huge one for both sides number three they need to stay special uh we have seen this two games is not a fluke um we've seen two games now where especially on kick coverage punt return coverage they've been fantastic on punting, they've been fantastic. On field goals, they've been fantastic. You've got to figure out a way to return the ball, either on kickoff or punt, at a level that is higher than what we've seen. But that's getting kind of nitpicky. Just stay special. You are doing I, I, a, a lot of things I just, right. I just want the punt return team to catch the ball. I want the punt that's, returner to catch the ball. It's I don't care about return yards. Catch it. That's important. But stay, stay special. Yes. Uh, that was my number three from last week. I thought about keeping it. <laughs> uh, but but I didn't. Um, I was waiting to see it. I, I needed to see two weeks for me to, to really believe it and buy in. And I am, yeah. I'm ready to buy in on the special teams. You're ready to be heard again. Uh, all right. Three keys don't, for me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Brooks and Dunn. Like what I did there. Um, <laughs> Unreal. You're, go home. Taz Brooks is going to get his. He averages Correct. 95 yards a game. What you can't do is let them get in a rhythm because he is controlling the tempo for them offensively. He, he you know, you, you need to keep him in front of you. He's going to get his four, three, four, five yards a carry more often than not. Don't let him get into those 10, 12, 
15 yard gainers on a regular basis where then they really crank up the tempo and now you're over committing to the run. They're dumping it off behind you. Like I, I think keeping him in that like five yard range, like I'm okay with him getting four or five yards because you're, you're not going to just shut him down. One, he's too good. And two, we know this run defense is a work in progress. Like it is not, you know, a, a world beating stuff, the run defense. So let him get a little bit of his and then use that to kind of control the rest of their, their offense. A lot of uh, that falls directly. In, a lot of that falls directly in the linebackers lap. So yeah, um, you got to figure that out. And we're going to get to them here, here in a minute as well. Control the clock. Corey Kiner, Brendan Sorsby. Corey Kiner, Brendan Sorsby. Let Kiner chew them up. They do not have, they are in in most metrics worse than Cincinnati run as a run defense. So give it to Corey. Give it to Evan Pryor. Let Sorsby run a little bit. And I think you can get them rhythm offenses want to be out there a lot. Like right. that's how they find their rhythm is they get a bunch of possessions. If you can limit the possessions, control the clock, uh, and and kind of make them a little disjointed and make them feel like there's pressure on them to to score every time. They have a veteran quarterback, so I don't think you're going to rattle him into mistakes. Uh, you're going to have to force him into mistakes. But offensively, control the clock. Do not let them control the tempo for you. Man the middle. When this pass defense has struggled, it has not been – down the sidelines. It has been intermediate crossing routes. It has been deep posts, stuff that runs, uh, you know, across the face of the safeties through the secondary. That is where Texas Tech, I think, when they break down tape on Cincinnati, they're going to, and this is something they do with their crossers and their, their tempo offense. Um, your linebackers are going to have to be great. We talked about this a little bit last night with Dave on the BCJ pod, when this Iowa State version of this defense was great, the linebackers were great. The linebackers were able to play in space while also being effective at the line of scrimmage. Um, that, for me, is how you're going to do number one. It, you know, if, if you can keep Taj Brooks in check a little bit, then maybe you can commit a little bit to keeping them from finding those empty spaces in the zones in front of the safeties behind the linebackers. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I just worry that they're going to try to just not dink and dunk per se, because I, I think of that more as side to side, but some of those we saw in the pit game when things went wrong, they were running those middle crossers and getting the ball into a guy's hands and by the time the defense was able to react, that guy was at full speed 15 yards down the field. And it's yeah. just hard to catch a guy when they're running in open space and they build up ahead of steam. So uh, I think the middle of the field in the passing game is, is where this defense is going to have to win. And I worry about that because that is where we've seen them have their biggest problems uh, when teams have, have put the ball in the air. Is Jonathan Thompson back? I don't know. Um, I was not there Tuesday. I don't think he practiced Tuesday. Um, it looked like kind of like a hip. hip oblique area. And those usually for a linebacker that you're wanting to, I mean, to I didn't play know in if space. Was, I don't know if we're looking at stinger versus, you know, flexor or oblique no, strain. I don't, or... Yeah. I, I don't know for sure, but it was in that region. And that's, that's not a great region for somebody Anybody. that you're trying to get back within, you know, seven days. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm not, anti like, I guess the best way to put it, I'm not anticipating him to be a heavy participant in this one, even if he can get out there. Just, just, just a, because another above average body to have in that yeah, core, sure. that linebacking core. And, you know, when you're trying to run guys around, whether it be getting in the backfield or out in coverage, and you were asking them to be great, and you're losing a guy who, again, is certainly above average. Uh, that's that that's hurting that it's that concerning group for yeah. sure. Um, 
it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fascinating game. I I really I am. I, I I'm so interested to see where this goes and and to see how this team handles that road environment. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna be crazy. And, and this probably should have been one of our keys at some point. Get out fast because you don't want that crowd to really get worked up. Tortillas flying. I know, right? We still haven't figured out the most important question of the week. Corn or flour? I, I, where did this even come from? What, what, who started throwing? Who threw the first tortilla? Who had a random pack of tortillas That's, that they were like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw I this. wonder. No, I Something. wonder if it, it was like you, you just you had a taco that you got at, at the concessions and you were like, I'm throwing this. They didn't just the have a pack taco? Of, no, the, who knows? I don't know. Not, I wasn't. Look, I wasn't. I wasn't there when the first tortilla was thrown. I'm just going to tell you this now. I'm not throwing a whole taco at anybody, especially like a legitimate. Like, I'm Dex guessing Mex the tortillas in Lubbock are pretty good. Pretty good. Tacos I, in Lubbock are probably pretty good. I I'm not. I don't. Same. I don't care how much I love my school. I'm it's not throwing a, my taco. It's well, that's the difference between us here in the Midwest, though, <laughs> and people who have their spoil of riches down in the Tex Mex <laughs> flavor land. I'm just saying. <laughs> Are they underestimate their tortillas in Lubbock? Is that what you're saying? It, they take it for granted. Yes. I mean, so much so that we're launching tortillas onto the field. Not once, every game. We're doing it every game. What are we doing? I, I will say, like when you find like a like a taco truck or like a good, like you know the best Mexican spots when you walk in and there's just Mexicans in there, and they look at you like, "What the hell are you? Like, who told you to come here? <laughs> this is our spot." Like, and then you know, like, okay, I found the spot. Um. <laughs> uh. So yeah, I I I just need to know flour or corn. Uh. <laughs> That takes us to the uh, the schedule release today, if you can pull that up, as uh, not only the non-conference, but the conference schedule fully released without times yet. But now we have dates, and the most significant thing that jumps out the minute the schedule was released, the first four games of the conference schedule. At Kansas State in Manhattan, the Little Apple, not the big one. Arizona at home, Baylor on the road, Kansas at home. Those are your first four games in the Big 12. Yikes. <laughs> we were given a favor, I believe, still, uh, with the football schedule, both this season and last season. I think we were also given a favor with the basketball schedule last season. So at some point, you needed to come to pay the piper. And truthfully, there is no easy portion of this schedule. So it well, yeah, I disagree, kind of. I, kinda. The, uh, I think it's front loaded and back loaded. That middle portion is not murderer's row. Like, if you scroll down a little bit, at Colorado, Arizona State at home, Texas Tech at home, the two-game trip to, to Utah at BYU at Utah, West Virginia at home, at UCF. Like, these are winnable games. Winnable? And, but some of these games you did not win a year ago. Uh, yes, but I'm talking about there's no Kansas, there's no Baylor, there's no Arizona, there's no, you know, like, these upper echelon teams in the big 12 don't live in the middle portion. They live in the first portion. And then you'll find it again down at the bottom with Iowa state, Baylor, Houston. Like I think it's here and here and there's wins in the middle. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying if this team is as good as we think they should be, there's wins in that middle portion of the schedule. It's a tough schedule. There, any way you break of it, of course. And it didn't matter. It, it truly. I don't think to me it didn't matter. I, I, I think any way you looked at it, it was going to be tough. If you're going to play the hardest four teams, 
I'd rather have them at the beginning before they really get their legs under them. Yeah. I mean, not to mention they don't have more... non-conference. So sure. they're not going to be ironing things out per se, but no, we... I would rather get them at the top. You're also getting them really at your freshest instead of no. after, after however, what is it? Eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it is. 10, 10, 10, weeks. 10, 10 weeks of no buy Wednesday, Saturday, when or Tuesday, whatever it is. Name your day of the week and Saturday yeah. every week for I mean, 10 weeks. There's eight days between Grambling State and Kansas State. So, you're need you know, every bit of that. Yeah. You know, you're going to get to enjoy Christmas a little bit, but you're going to be able to get back in the gym and, and fine tune things from the non-conference. So, I, I you know, I, I just think if, if this team is going to be as good as we think, they've got a chance in that middle portion to get on a roll. What they can't do, though, Aaron, is they can't start 0-4 in Big 12 play. And if you don't play well, you're going to start 0-4 in Big 12 play. Well, let's say they do play well and look at the flip side of that coin. Say you win three of four. Yeah. Or even two. Even if you go two and two going into at Colorado, and, Arizona. Yeah. Two and two is fine. Three and yeah. one, you're cooking with gas. Yeah. And Keegan and I talked about this a little bit this morning or this afternoon. The hard part there is you're staring down 0 and 2 at home if you don't pop a, a top 10 team, a top 10 level team. And how many times did we talk about last year? The math gets real hard. You start dropping home games. So that's going to be a ch- You've got to get one of Arizona, Kansas at Fifth Third Arena. And boy, that place is going to be nuts. The thing that's interesting that we talked also talked about today, school doesn't come back until like the 13th. So Students aren't going to be on campus for the Arizona game. They'll be coming back for the Kansas game. But, I mean, I still think the place is going to be rowdy, but that Arizona game might not have a whole lot of, like, student presence. Even though I would assume the students living locally are going to want to be there to watch UC play Arizona. I would think that, especially depending on how this team does throughout the um, non-con, I would think that the school has a backup plan. Sure. Sell those tickets to the public and you put sure. people in those seats. But right. Johnny from Delhi probably not going to be as rowdy as a, a, a 19 year old on a Saturday afternoon or evening uh, going crazy in the stands. But Johnny from Delhi is probably going to be a little bit more rowdy than the red sweater crowd. Yes. Th- that's that's undeniable. So, but the thing is that we did talk about. That game in Manhattan, that's not a large metropolitan location. The students aren't going to be there. So maybe you catch a break at K-State with that December 30th game that it's not as, you know, wild as uh, normally would be if school was in session. Is is Baylor back in session? Because you run into the same Probably thing not. in Waco. You run Probably into the not. same but exact that's... thing in Waco. But not, that that's a – remember they downsized that arena. There's only like seven or 8,000 seats. That place is still going to be full and, and pretty crazy. Um, they're not having to fill, a, you know, 15, 13, 15,000 seat arena there anymore. As, as crazy as seven or 8,000 people can get, I suppose. In Waco. What, what else is there to do in Waco? Go to the Baylor game. David Koresh would like a word. Magnolia Farms only goes so far. <laughs> All right. That's going to wrap it up. It's going to be a late one Saturday, Aaron. It's going to be a late one. But we'll be here with the aftermath following the Bearcats taking on Texas Tech. Until then, thanks to everybody for tuning in this week. One of the best weeks in BCJ history. We'll see you next time. That is the Nightcap brought to you by Hail Mary Sports Bar right here on BearcatJournal.com. See ya!